ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful man who has lived a wonderful life, Attorney David Gabois. Thank you very much. Um, before I begin, uh, I've got a little something I have to do. Oh, he's going to sing a French song. <laughs> you know, I, I've had a great life, and uh, most of it's due to Jenny and to my family. And I want to say, Jenny, I love you. I will keep you as my wife and best friend to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. And this is my solemn vow to you. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank all of you for your generous contributions to the boys and girls clubs of Metro West. That's what this affair is all about. It's about those kids that you are supporting this evening. Every dollar is going to get $10 worth of reward. It's, it's just amazing. And whether you're a $50 contributor or a $25,000 contributor, it all means the same. You've done your best, and we just love you for that. A few months ago, it was uh, November, I'm having my first chemo treatment. And the phone rings. And who was it? The Energizer Bunny. All right, it's Arthur. David, I got an idea. Yes, Arthur. Not David, how are you doing? It's David, I have an idea. I want to do a testimonial for you. And I immediately said, forget it. No, 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 you listen to me. And as you've heard before, he says, I think you can raise some significant money for the Boys Club, maybe twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars mm. I said, let me think about it. So I thought about it, I called my brothers, asked them what they thought. Not a lot of enthusiasm, but support. If you want it, go for it. So when I think about it, and I know Arthur, like I say, the energy, you know, he's the bunny. He just, he just goes, goes, and goes. And I'm saying to myself, okay, we could get halfway through this project, and he gets a phone call from Arizona Hopi uh, Indians saying, we need you, Arthur, and he's out of here. <laughs> you know? So you just don't know what's going to happen. So that was just before Thanksgiving, and so I went to my nephew, Charlie, and he's the hammer. And I asked Charlie, I said, Charlie, will you agree to be a co-chair of an event involving Arthur, and your job is to make sure Arthur keeps focused. <laughs> Don't have to do anything else. Well, he kept Arthur focused, and much, much more than that. And that's why we're here tonight. The Boys Club Boys Club, if you think about it, 
if we go way back into the 40s, we had J.J. Bradley and Ernie Holt, two local businessmen who dug into their pockets and started the Boys Club on Main Street. It was in an old store, not much to it. But it was a place for kids to go to. From there, they moved to Mechanic Street, second floor. They had a gym. That's where I first started my association with the Boys Club. It was a great place to go. I was 13 years old. Here we are. Couldn't wait for Friday. Couldn't wait for Friday night. Couldn't wait for Saturday to go there, box, play basketball, play a little pool. And as the club grew, we moved to Rollins Avenue. By that time, I was in high school. In high school, all, high, all the older high school kids got together. We helped here the pastimes, uh, which was the old modern theater. We, we helped tear the seats out. And what did we find down there but this beautiful basketball floor? It was, it was terrific. And then we had the sock hops there. And it's those, and it was during that time that, that the attachment of the Boys Club to my heart grew. And, and then as I, after college and after the service and after going to law school, you know, I went on the, Ralph Grasso asked me, gee, would you like to be a member of the Boys Club uh, Board of Directors? And I just jumped in with, 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 with every, everything that I had because of what the Boys Club had done for me and what I saw what it did for kids. And then Boys Club moved to its current location. We had great directors with wonderful boards of directors. Everyone works so hard in order to, to do things for kids. Boys Club has changed from when I used to go as a kid and even when I was on the board of directors in the early 80s. Back then, it was a place for kids to go recreate. Today, it's a kid, place for kids to go recreate. It's a place for kids to have a second home. It's a place for kids to be able to go study. It's a place for kids to be able to get some tutoring, as opposed to having just going there at night and on Saturday. Now it's open. There's a bus that brings kids from the schools uh, uh, to the club. Um, it's just. Uh, it's a place for kids who don't have parents that care, that they can get some caring. And it's due to folks such as yourselves who dig deep into your pockets that make the Boys Club go. Um, their membership is, uh, fee is just to show some responsibility uh, for kids to know that it's not always just a free meal. But if they need a free meal, it's there at the Boys Club. You know, it's the Boys and Girls Club, and I mentioned J.J. Bradley and I mentioned Ernie Holt. We have two people here tonight that formed the Girls Club. And the Girls Club had the same values and did the same things that the Boys Club was doing. Instead of basketball, made them sewing. Um, and I'd like to recognize Mary Lou Vanzini and Delma Josephson, the co-founders of the Girls Club back in the, I'm not sure what year it was, but they're here tonight. <laughs> and as volunteers, like them and that make this thing happen. When I was diagnosed with incurable cancer and given a timetable by my doctors, timetable that involved months instead of years, 
my daughter Nikki had a very difficult time telling her children about how sick I was, and especially her two boys who you spoke, who you heard tonight. I talked to Nikki about that and I said, I'll tell them, I'll let them know. So I took the boys to breakfast and I explained to them, one, how sick I was, and two, how upset their mother was, and that they had to take care of their mother. They had to give strength to their mother and that they have done. I explained to the boys that we're made up of a body and a soul. And that, that although the body may die, the soul lasts forever. And I explained to Gaby, I told Gaby, look Gabe, when you're at bat sometime, the bases are loaded, two outs, last inning, tie score, and you're at bat. Step back from the plate. Pepe will be there with you. And he'll help you bring that winning run in. All you have to do is ask him. And when young Harry is with a group of guys, it's a Friday night, you're going to want to do something. And all of a sudden the discussion comes, not sure what to do, should he go, should he participate? It's all right, Harry. Ask Pepe. Just talk to him. You'll get the right answer. To all of you, family, business acquaintances, friends, strangers, I give you a promise. You have a problem, call on Pepe. Call Gaddy, call Dave, call Attorney Gad Boys, call your friend, I'll be there for you. I want to give you my heartfelt thanks for coming this evening. I'm not afraid of the future. In fact, I look forward to the future. Because the future is always bright. When my, when my oncologist and my surgeon gave me the news of my condition, I told the doctors, look doc, don't worry about me. First thing I, I did was I put up a sign in my room that said, no crying aloud. Can't have that around here. And I told the doctors, look doc, I don't care. I'm going to live every day and I'm not going to die every day. I'm going to live it right till the end. Whether it's tomorrow, next month, or a year from now, or two years from now, doesn't matter. You can't be afraid. We all have a time clock. I've been blessed in that I have an idea of when that clock is going to stop. And it gives me an opportunity to bond with people such as you. I mean, this has, this experience has brought to me such heartfelt things. I've received letters from Derek's friends, Nikki's friends, friends of mine. I've gotten calls from Arizona, Florida. It just makes this easy makes it easy. And I want to thank all of you for coming this evening, and I want to thank all of you mostly for the contributions that you've made to just a great organization. And hopefully, for an like this, hopefully you'll continue to contribute in the years ahead. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thanks, buddy.
Thank you all. Good night.